Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with another video. So who is this against? Well, it's a new person. You don't know, but we have to introduce our friend Chess Leon Master. So our friend Chess Leon Master is playing against me in the simul that we have every Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Let's get started. D4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop to b4. So this is what is called the Nimzo Indian defense, or the Nimzo Indian defense, or however you pronounce it, Nimzo Indian, Nimzo Indian, whatever it is. But essentially, the bishop comes to b4, pins the knight here, the knight comes to f6, pawn goes to e6, this is a casual setup. And I choose the queen c2 variation. And after queen c2, there are so many ways to approach this position. Some people play b6. Some people play castles. Or not b6. Some people play d5. Some people play castles and then play b6. It really depends, right? It's up to you. Some people play c5. Some people play knight to c6. There are so many moves for black here. And out of all those moves, our friend Chess Leon Master played c6. And personally, I had not seen this move before. But I knew the idea of it. Black wants to play d5 and create a very triangular center. It's like the London, right? Or the the pyramid. Remember the uh, the the uh, black side pyramid, and, like the Karokan. They're all building pyramids. And Leon's doing his thing, just trying to build a pyramid. So I played e4. I said I'm not afraid to take the center. And after d5, I took took and e5. Knight to e4, and I did what I did. I brought my bishop out. I said I'm ready to take take twice, right? So then knight takes c3 happened, and to be honest, I kind of felt like knight takes c3 just, I don't know, it seemed like once black brought the knight to e4, and I played bishop to d3, capturing a knight when coming here is probably not worth coming to e4 for. I mean, there probably had to be a better reason. You know, obviously, Leon Master was thinking about queen to a5 and possibly putting more pressure on this diagonal, right? That's one thing. But after bishop d3, I would, I would, I think, back the knight back to g5 or play something else because I kind of feel like if you take the knight on c3, Number one, you have to question whether it's a beneficial trade for you. Because after knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, all of a sudden I have this very good looking pawn chain, right? And it only helps white if you capture on c3 with the knight. Um, but in other words, I would say even a move like c5 is quite interesting because. All of a sudden, it brings up the topic, do I play knight to e2? Do I take on e4? Right? It brings complexity with it. And that's another thing I really think about as to approaching a position. Knight takes c3, b takes c3, and now bishop to e7. So now I complete my develop. I play knight to f3. I could have also played knight to e2. I think that was the better move because... Because in hindsight, I I one day want to play f4 and f5, but at that moment, I was just not thinking about it. Just play knight f3, and after bishop to g4, which is a pretty good move, I played rook b1. And, you know, at this moment, I was thinking about, you know, do I really care whether this bishop trading on f3 is a problem? And... I would say that beginner self, my beginner self, so like if I were, if, when I was about 800, 900 rated, 
I hated double pawns, right? So when I was 900 rated, I would move my knight back to d2. But I am much higher rated, and I've taken from experiences that double pawns are not the end of the world, so I played rook to b1. I would much prefer activity over this sort of taking f3, queen to c8, and now I play knight to d2, because I, you know, I wanted to play castles, but there might be, you know, bishop takes f3, queen h3, I don't want to deal with that thing, right? I know it's annoying, it might be annoying, and I know I, I could still play it, but I decided not to, right? I decided, let's get out of it first. Let's play knight d2. Let's think about playing f4, right? Playing f4 and just expanding on the king side. I think that is a good suggestion, right? And in addition, I play knight d2 because I want to think about h3. And if this bishop goes to h5, I can place my bishop on f5 and really dominate this sort of atmosphere. Knight d7 happened, and here I said, let's play h3. Let's scare away the bishop and let's start expanding. Now, another move I could have played is f4, right? Another move I could have played is h3 like I played in the game. I could have also thought about this knight f1, knight e3, and knight to f5 maneuver. That's another thing I thought about, but I said, I'm going to play h3, and after bishop h5, I'm going to castle. I don't care what happens. Bishop g6, very good move by our friend Chess Leon Master. Simply saying, recognizing that my queen and bishop are very strong, right? One move I could have played here is the move e6. And after knight f6, I could have taken on f7. Um, that would have been really strong now looking at it, but I didn't play it because at the time, I was in a simul, and you don't have time really to think about brilliancies for the simul. You just think about, you know, based on instinct, what is the best move in the position. Or you take some time and you think, okay, I have these options, but, you know, I have to think about my options and try to cycle through them really quickly. So I said, f4, look straight for Bishop takes, queen takes, castles, f5. I'm just pushing e6, queen to g3. Now I'm I'm changing directions because I want to bring my knight to f3 and I want to bring my bishop to h6. But I also want to say, okay, maybe queen to h4, g4, g5, right? I want to start an attack because I sort of realize, okay, well, there's nothing to be going on in the center. Maybe black is going to come here and open up the c file, but I shouldn't be too worried about that. So then rook d8 happened, and immediately I said, hmm, I don't know about that. I mean, I kind of feel like it may be a little bit slow, but I can see the point, right? Bishop to d6 and queen to c7. So I like it. I like what our friend Chess Leon Master is doing. I continue with my plan. Knight f3, bishop d6, queen to g4. Keeping the flexibility of bishop h6 and the target on g7 open. Queen to c7, wonderful. I play h4 now. So instead of going queen to h5, g4, g5, I, I say, you know what? I like my h-pawn. I'm going to let Harry roll down the board. h4, h5, h6. Just do the same thing. Knight to c4, I'm not too worried about that, right? There's no fork here because the bishop guards it. So the bishop guards very important squares. What do I do? So I recognize there is no threat. Play h5, and threatening h6 again. King h8, I continue to play h6. But then g takes h6 happens, and to be fairly honest, I, I was expecting rook to g8 here. Um, and after rook to g8, I was thinking, I'm going to move my queen to h4, try to attack this pawn, and just have a good time. Just try to, and if I 
somehow screw it up, I screw it up. But after g takes h6, I was a bit surprised. And to be honest, I had a few moves here. Queen to h5, queen to h4, bishop takes h6. I had many moves here, but I went with the one most straightforward. I took on h6, and after rook g8, I played queen to h4, just threatening this pawn on f6, bishop d7, and now bishop to f4. So now I'm changing my direction of thought. I'm saying, you know, king f2, rook to h1, go for h7. But I also think about, okay, king to f2, maybe g4, g5. But my goal is to definitely expand. And after queen to a5, I started to realize how important this rook was and how important it was to target this b7 pawn. Because I know the queen was a really good defender of this b7 pawn, but the pawn now serves as an important way of allowing me to break through. Rook takes b7, queen takes a2, rook to f2, just keeping my king safe. And once the bishop moves away, I have checkmate. So rook to e8, and now rook to e7, rook takes, queen takes, rook to g7, and now the killer move knight to g5 will finish it off because I have knight to f7 smothered mate coming in. Our friend chess leon master ran out of time and all broke loose. So what really happened here, right? How did I win? Well, to be honest, c6 is okay, but I wouldn't recommend it, right? Because at this point, I already have another central pawn going. So I would recommend the move d5 first to first solidify control of this e4 square. I think that although you may think that you might have extra time to build that triangle, sometimes taking space in the center is not bad. So in the game c6, this was all okay, although knight to e4, bishop to d3, you could think about bishop to f5, but the problem with that is after knighting 2 and f3, these two pieces, assuming the bishop comes to f5, would be really clumsy. So in this case, I would recommend the move c5 and create some chaos for me on the d4 pawn. But instead, knight takes c3 happen, and rook to b1, I felt like, really played a crucial role in me winning the game. I think later on we saw that this was a way of breaking through, and in hindsight, if we knew that was going to happen, maybe black could have played b6 here, but queen to c8 felt very logical at the time. Knight to d7, so this is all logical. I'm just pushing my pawns up, and here I'm rerouting my pieces, Leon Chess is doing his best to defend h6, and at this point, rook to g8 is probably better because you don't want to leave the f6 pawn alone just yet. And in the game, I just got to broke through with this queen to a5 move. It really helped me. Um, but I would say the game loser in this game was g takes h6 because I got the chance to play bishop takes and queen h4. This was really important in my pursuit to success. And taking the b7 pawn was a just another part of the puzzle. And with knight g5, I settled it all. So really complex game. I basically went through an attack, just kept pushing, pried through the weaknesses, saw those gaps of entry, and that's where I came in and infiltrated. So, not an easy game, but they look easy, but no, it's very hard. So, chess is a hard game, and that's okay if we lose sometimes, because it's a learning experience, it's a fun experience, it's a winning experience for all. I'll see you next time.